Now we have a question from the audience from KP on Twitter. What is the most interesting finding since the last interview? So if you can like describe a particular interesting finding that you found, simplify it, you know, because we don't have like code snippets right now or diagrams, but just, yeah. Sure, sure. Yeah, actually, I haven't thought about this, but now I can think of... Uh two uh, vulnerabilities that I have found that are both critical vulnerabilities and have been very nice. And I have been very proud uh, with finding them. You can check my reports on GitHub, by the way, on github.com slash Pashov. You can find- We will put a link audit. in the description. So yeah, yeah, you, yeah, for the audit okay. reports by Pashov. Exactly. Almost all of my audit reports are already published, so you can find a lot of uh, good learning materials there. But I can tell you about two vulnerabilities. One of them was with, with uh, I was reviewing this smart contract wallet um, code base. And uh, you, you, you had to do, like you had this option where you sign uh, transactions off chain and a relayer will actually execute those transactions for you. But uh, there was a critical vulnerability where one of the data that was used uh, in the method, the execute method body, was uh, one of the one of the values was given as a function argument. It was not part of the signature, so the relayer or whatever whoever had the signature could have changed this value and could have uh, made some transaction revert or just just made so just execute some griefing attack on the actual person who owns the wallet so it was it was a very nice finding basically you, when it comes to signatures and signing data off chain should always you should always check that uh, all pieces of data that should be signed are signed and this was not the case in in, in this place and it was a great critical severity vulnerability i even got a bonus payout of one thousand dollars from the client which was a great thing um, and uh, one other finding that I have just published like one week ago was uh, it was like this this raffle game on Polygon, which uh, were using um, Chainlink's VRF for verifiable randomness, but they didn't configure it properly because uh, the VRF version two has this property of uh, request confirmations, which is basically how many blocks should the the VRF service wait until they provide you randomness or something like this. And uh, it, it was important and they added this property in the version two, it was non-existent in version one, because exactly because uh, they were supporting different chains now, not only Ethereum and on other chains, for example, in Polygon, you had, sometimes you had uh, a lot of uh, chain re reorgs and you have, you have um, different, um, different uh, organizations and ordering of transactions. Some transactions can do, go in different blocks and whatever. And in, when it comes to VRF, if your uh, request for randomness uh, goes into another block, if the chain reorgs, your randomness will be different. So this is why it's very important to configure this property uh, in correctly. Polygon in particular. Yes, in Polygon in particular, because in my report, I linked the uh, a page where, where, where it goes to the Polygon reorgs which happen every day. And you can see, especially when I was doing the audit, in the last 24 hours, there were like 25 reorgs and some of them had a depth of more than five blocks. And those guys who built this project set this property to only three blocks, three blocks uh, confirmations, which was a very, very bad thing because what could have happened is someone winning a raffle and then when a block reorg happens, the blockchain will just tell them, oh no, you're not a winner anymore. Like you, you don't have a reward. So, so yeah, and it was a very bad thing, I think, for the protocol. I mean, imagine being a player, winning a raffle, and then uh, the application saying, no, you didn't win anything. So Not it was only that, thing. then another player might win suddenly and like, hey, you know. <laughs> exactly. Someone who, who it, the application tells him, you just lost, sorry, you lost your money. And then it's, he, he wins. It's just a bad raffle, you know, it's just a raffle that like you win and exactly. you can lose your, your prize after... Exactly. You have to do one thing correctly and you don't do it correctly. So yeah, it was it was a critical severity vulnerability. But yeah, basically, probably the developer haven't, haven't been reading the Chainlink VRF documentation. And I have been reading it much in depth. And I have been reviewing like maybe five or six code bases using uh, Chainlink's VRF. And almost on each single one of them, I have found either a high or a critical severity vulnerability just because they are not following the security considerations written in Chainlink docs. 
which means again developers are not reading documentation uh, in depth and it's not a big documentation like it takes probably 15 minutes or even 10 minutes to read it and to check your code against it to check if you are following the security considerations but developers don't do it which is which is a bad thing but this is why i have a job i guess so yeah exactly so these are some very interesting findings and there are so many mistakes that devs can do but yeah, that's why we are here, you know, to find those and the more, the more, the f- to find those mistakes and the more audits, private audits that you are doing. As you said, you had experience with four repositories with a VRF Chainlink, so you already like okay, you see a VR using contract that is using VRF by Chainlink, you already automatically you have the experience, you have the skill to note to notice those mistakes and highlight them in your report, which is a, a valuable, very valuable skills because. The consequences are tragic, right? A raffle which doesn't work as expected, a relayer that can uh, basically change transaction that that he doesn't own, you know, like these kind of like crazy things that eventually you see millions of dollars are lost. So that's the ecosystem we're in. Exactly, exactly. And uh, yeah, experience really matters uh, when it comes to a security researcher. And with experience, you can actually be making more money and asking for more money. Because when you have experience with over five code bases using Chainlink VRF, it is highly probable that you'll be finding most of the issues related to it. And uh, also, uh, since you have been uh, reviewing so many code bases using this technology, you have probably gone really deep into their documentation. Also, you have been reading other reports. And also, we can mention here this tool, which is called Solodit. Solodit, Solodit, Solodit yeah. Solodit, yes. And you can find a lot of issues there. I, I use it myself personally. I think almost everybody is using it. It's a great tool where you can just uh, search for a specific keyword like uh, VRF or Chainlink and you can find all reported issues on Coderina, on Sherlock and on other reports that have been built into the system uh, integrated and uh, it's one of the best tools in my opinion in Web3 security and I've made a video tutorial about it so you can just search on YouTube Johnny Time Solidate and you will find all the tutorial of how to utilize this tool the best way you can yeah yeah, it's it's great thing that you did a tutorial because uh, a lot of people have been using it almost every day i think even their uh, their service is sometimes slow because there are so many requests uh, on a daily basis but yeah uh, when you have been having experience with a certain type of technology like chainlink vrf you have probably been reading all the reported issues on solid you have been reading the documentation you have been reading code that integrates with it so you are uh, more experienced you will probably find more issues than just a junior guy so this is another point that I have now in myself, which is building my business even better.